This is the towering redwood, Sequoia sempervirens which grows in the thin belt along the northern Pacific coast of the United States. These redwoods are the world's tallest conifers. One specimen has been measured at nearly 120 meters, as tall as a 40-story building. At this height, and their extensive root systems, allow them greater access to minerals and water. But being tall also has its disadvantages. The needles of the giant redwood high above the forest floor, constantly lose water to the atmosphere through the process of transpiration. Transpiration occurs through special pores called stomata. Each stoma regulates the exchange of gases between the plant and the atmosphere. The diffusion of carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. And since the concentration of water vapor is usually higher inside the plant than outside, water vapor also diffuses out. This water is constantly replaced by a complex system of transports called the xylem. The xylem consists of reinforced, stiff cells, which help the tree withstand intense storms and winds. It extends from the root tips all the way up to the ends of the leaves. In the trunk, the innermost part of the xylem is heartwood and is made up of older, inactive cells. These cells have been completely filled with pigment, resins, tannins, and gums, providing added strength to the tree and protecting against insect pests. The thin outer layer of xylem or sapwood is active and consists of elongated cells with many openings or pits. Pits are particularly numerous on the tapered end where one cell meets the next. Continuous vertical pathways are thus formed, enabling water and minerals to be transported up to the leaves. Since, in a large tree, several tons of water are being transported at any one time, a vast number of these pathways are needed. But just how a tree manages to raise water more than 100 meters above the ground is an astounding feat of engineering. Contrary to what we might think, there is no significant pumping action from osmotic pressure in the roots. Instead, plants use the unavoidable loss of water during transpiration to their advantage. As water molecules are constantly lost through the stomata, replacement molecules are drawn up through the xylem pathways. Current theory suggests that the key to this amazing accomplishment is a unique property of water. But to fully understand this, we need to look at an individual water molecule. Two hydrogen atoms are joined to a single oxygen atom at a bond angle of 104.5 degrees. Because of this asymmetry and the fact that oxygen has a stronger attraction for electrons than hydrogen, water is a polar molecule. It has a negative charge on the oxygen side and a positive charge near the hydrogen. The oxygen atom, with its slight negative charge, is attracted to hydrogen atoms in the cellulose of the cell wall. So, the molecules adhere to the sides and prevent the column of water from pulling away and breaking. Since, once broken, that particular xylem pathway would almost certainly cease to function. Even more important, the hydrogen atoms, with their slight positive charge, are attracted to the negative oxygen atoms of the other water molecule, drawing the molecules close enough to form hydrogen bonds. This effectively binds the water molecules together, so that when one is pulled up, others move along with it. And the loss of water through transpiration 
creates a tremendous pull on the water in the xylem columns. This binding force, called cohesion, gives a one millimeter wide column of water as much tensile strength as a steel wire of the same diameter. Yet as powerful as the forces of adhesion and cohesion are, they are not capable of filling an empty column 100 meters tall. Botanists have determined that in the spring, as the new layers of xylem tissue begin to grow, the cells draw water laterally from the older cells. This keeps the new cells filled as they grow to full size. At maturity, the end walls become more permeable as the pits develop and the transport system becomes operational. The whole intricate water transport system begins with the fine single-celled root hairs, which spread extensively throughout the soil. Minerals such as nitrates, phosphates, and potassium, essential for plant growth, are dissolved in the groundwater. A number of observations indicate that roots absorb mineral ions through the process of cation exchange. The root hairs selectively absorb the mineral ions, and water follows by osmosis to reduce the concentration gradient. Once inside, the demands of transpiration and photosynthesis continually draw water and minerals up the xylem pathways to the leaves. Outside the xylem is a second transport system called the phloem, which extends throughout the plant parallel to the xylem. This intricate branch network of cells distributes the carbohydrates produced in photosynthesis to all the active cells in the plant. In the leaves, the phloem picks up the carbohydrates by active transport. Additional water is drawn in from surrounding cells by osmosis, increasing the hydrostatic pressure within the phloem cells. At the other end of the system, carbohydrates are removed for storage and cell nourishment. Water is also removed, reducing the hydrostatic pressure within the cell. So, a continuous flow of carbohydrates from source to area of need is maintained. Water and carbohydrate molecules pass from one phloem cell to another through the specialized end walls of each cell. The end wall containing numerous perforations or pores is called a sieve plate. If damage occurs and the cell walls are ruptured, a special protein moves quickly to the pores and plugs them, cutting off the flow in much the same way as clotting blood seals a wound. The two transport systems, xylem and phloem, crucial role in the competitive struggle for the lion's share of sunlight, enabling plants to ascend to greater and greater heights.